video, we'll be going over IRS Form 3911, Taxpayer Statement Regarding Refund. Normally, the IRS will give you a copy of this with some information already completed at the top. This tax form is completed by the taxpayer to provide the Internal Revenue Service with necessary information so that they can trace the non-receipt or the loss of an already issued refund check. So at the top, you should see some sort of information about an inquiry that you've previously placed about a tax refund for a specific tax year. If you didn't receive the refund or if the refund check that you received was lost, stolen, or destroyed, you'll need to complete the entire form. If there are portions of the form that do not apply to you, you can mark them as NA, and then you should return the form to the IRS in the envelope that was provided or fax the form to a specific fax number that should be at the top of the form. There are a couple of notes. Uh, first, if you are requesting information for more than one refund, you must complete a separate form 3911 for each refund that you're requesting information about. And two, if you're in possession of a check that was not cashed within one year of the issue date, it can no longer be cashed. You should contact the Internal Revenue Service for instructions on how to return your check. For information on how to complete or where to send this form, you can visit the IRS website www.irs.gov forward slash forms hyphen pubs forward slash about hyphen form hyphen 3911 hyphen taxpayer hyphen statement hyphen regarding refund. <clears throat> we'll quickly look at this form. There's section one where you give your information, section two, information about the refund, section three uh, is your certification, and then really on the back of this form is just some information about the Privacy Act and the Paperwork Reduction Act. The average estimated time to complete this form should be less than five minutes. So at the top of section one, you will print your name in block one with your taxpayer identification number. This could be a social security number, could be an individual tax ID number. For businesses, it should be your employer identification number. If you're filing a joint return, your spouse's name will go into line two as well as your spouse's tax identification number. And if line two is completed, then the spouse must sign on line 11 below. Three, give the current address to include street or P.O. box, city, state, and zip code. And then uh, right below that, give an area code and a telephone number where you can be reached during a normal working hours between 8 and 4 p.m. On line four, Enter the information exactly as it appeared on your tax return. If there's no change from the above, simply enter NA. If you've authorized a representative to receive a refund check on your behalf, enter that person's name in line 5. Enter that person's address in line 6 below. For line 7, you'll enter information about the type of return, whether it was a individual or a business return, what type of form you used. Most individual taxpayers will use IRS Form 1040 unless they're using 1040 SR. Businesses may use different tax forms based on the type of business entity that is filing the tax return or other type of tax return. Type of refund requested, whether it was a check, a direct deposit, and then the refund amount, which you should be able to find from your income tax return. The name of the bank where you normally cash or deposit your checks, 
the account type, whether it was a checking or a savings account or some other account. Uh, the routing number, which is the nine digit number that's unique to each financial institution, as well as the account number, which is unique to the individual. Which tax period and the date that you filed the return. All of this goes in section one. In section two, you'll complete uh, refund information and you'll check boxes that apply to you. For line eight, whether you did not receive a refund at all or if you received a refund but it was lost, stolen, or destroyed, check the appropriate boxes. Or in line nine, you received the refund check and you signed it. There is a note that the law does not allow the IRS to issue a replacement check if you endorsed it and then someone else cashed the check. That does not constitute forgery. It simply is a stolen check that the IRS cannot replace. And section three is the certification where you will sign below. If this was a joint return and your spouse's information was in line two, then both you and your spouse will be required to sign on lines 10 and 11 respectively and then provide the date of signature. Now please note that this is a declaration under penalty of perjury and if you receive two refunds you will re return one of them to the IRS. That's all there is to this uh, video. This is a one-page tax form which should be pretty straightforward. If you would like, we've also written an article with step-by-step -step guidance. You can find that article on our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. Simply go to the search bar, type in IRS Form 3911. You should see our article. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you have any questions, you can always post them in the comments. Thank you.